For the linear reservoir, there are other assumptions. And basically, the conceptual scheme is based on comparing, assuming that the catchment works as a tank. So our catchment is schematized as a tank where in this tank we have some water stored. And here you can see a first difference. Explicitly, the storage is going to play. It's going to play. And then when it rains, you have precipitation that falls here. And you have a river flow, which is assumed to originate from a bottom discharge of this tank. And let's specify one important thing. What is this precipitation? It's uh, net, net, so there is already, let's say, there are enough coefficient. This is already, uh, already, the water losses, uh, the rain losses are already subtracted. And uh, it's, uh, rate of rainfall, which means, what is P then? P, if we want to indicate PT, if we want to indicate the rainfall intensity, gross rainfall, not net rainfall, gross rainfall, with uh, the symbol I, as we did before, then P is given by I times runoff coefficient times area of the catchment. This is what is P, different symbology. So basically, just because we want to compute this water balance, which we, you will see, we will apply, we will impose, basing on uh, net quantities without having to compute the losses. Let's compute the losses at the beginning. Now, if I impose the conservation of mass in this tank, I can write that at any time, the difference between rainfall minus river flow is equal to the rate of change of the storage. This is simple. Conservation of mass. It's explicitly imposed, not like in the time area where it's implicitly imposed. In this case, it's explicitly imposed. And again, notice the difference of the storage which is explicitly highlighted. Now, we have the problem that we cannot solve this equation. We have two unknowns. The unknowns are the river flow and the storage. So we have to introduce a second conservation law. And the second conservation law could be, for instance, a conservation of energy law. And it allows us to include a relationship between the river discharge and the storage. This is the form of the law that we need. We have two unknowns, and therefore we need a relationship between these two unknowns. And uh, from hydraulics, you know how to relate the outflow from a bottom hole of a tank to the storage. It's a nonlinear relationship, which is storage and equation. It's nonlinear. In this case, for simplicity, we introduce a linear relationship. And therefore, we assume that Q is QT is equal to WT divided by K. K is a time constant. Sorry, it's a constant that has the dimension of a time. This is linear. And basically, being linear, it's empirical. But it, is, it resembles a conservation of energy equation. Because every time that you establish a relationship between a kinematic, kinematic variable, river flow, and a geometric variable, the volume, you imply some conservation of energy. You have something which is static that is to be changed related to something that is dynamic, conservation of energy.
something geometric related to something kinematic conservation of energy. Okay, now it's possible to substitute this relationship here, and then we can write the above equation as pt minus qt is equal to uh, equal to k dq in the t because w because w is equal to k times q and therefore you can bring k which is constant out of the derivative and then you can write the equation in this way now this is we can integrate it because it's uh, we have just one unknown and to integrate it let's separate the variables and write it in this way we can write e t is equal to or let's say let's divide by k 1 over k dt is equal to 1 over k qt plus the qt over the t okay now let's observe ah okay let's multiply left and right hand side by this quantity 1 over k e to the power of t over k this is a constant quantity which we can multiply here and there so this is equal to 1 over k again e to the power of t over k ut plus e to the power of t over k take your t over the t look this is the derivative with respect to time of qt the power of t over k and let's just try, try to be more precise what is the derivative of product is the derivative of the first the q over the t times the second like is e to the power of t over k plus the derivative the first like it is qt times the derivative of the second which is again e to the power of t over k times the derivative of the power which is 1 over k yeah and probably that function yeah correct thank you now I move here Now, I can integrate this equation between 0 and t. So I can write integral between 0 and t of 1 over k e to the power of t over k precipitation t, which is equal to, in this case, if I compute the integral of a derivative, I have the argument of the derivative itself which has to be computed by 0 and from 0 to t and uh, the argument of the derivative is qt e to the power of t over k and uh, can I delete this blackboard the previous one copy the already okay
this is equal to so let's compute in zero it's q zero uh, 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 uh. let me compute first of all in uh, in, uh, in the upper upper uh, limit because it's the positive one so I have just qt e to the power of t over k minus q0 and here I have e to the power of 0 which is 1 so it's minus q0 what is important for me is to compute qt so let me rewrite this relationship by dividing everything by e to the power of t over k so I can then write qt is equal to the integral and uh, I can bring uh, the division by e to the power of t over k into the integral because e to the power of t over k is constant so I can write into the integral and sorry I, I see here that I forgot first of all at the tau here okay and uh, I forgot here to use not t but the integral variable tau is it clear the correction that I'm making I forgot the t which is at the tau and then I have to use the variable of integration inside here so e to the power of t over k is a constant e to the power of tau over k is not a constant but in any case I can bring into the integral the division of e to the power of t over k so I can write 1 over k and then here I can write e to the power of tau, uh, tau minus t over k p t tau in the tau you understand dividing by e to the power of t over k means that I can put the two together and here I put a minus minus because I'm dividing Good, and then I can write here by changing the sign plus q0 e to the power of minus t over k. And that's it, I finished. Only one thing I want to change. I want to, just because uh, to unify my symbology, what with what is written usually in textbook I want just to make a change of sign in the argument of the integral so let me write precipitation first p tau and then 1 over k and now the change of sign e to the power of minus t minus tau over k the tau plus q0 to the power of e minus t over k I'm not sure you can read here is minus is the same I just copied back this one so this is the final formulation and uh, of the linear reservoir so what is the moral of the story? The moral of the story is that according to the linear reservoir, the linear discharge at time t is given by the sum of two terms. The first term is an integral, which in discrete terms becomes a summation. An integral of what? of the product between rainfall and a transformation factor which is 1 over k e to the power of minus t minus tau over k so first contribution is this integral 
of what, again, of the product between rainfall and the transformation factor, time varying, plus another contribution, which is a depletion term. Depletion is only meant to the meaning that you have a contribution given by Q0, which is the river flow at time 0, at the beginning of the rainfall, which gives a contribution which goes to 0 <coughs> as time increases. You see, e to the power of minus t over k for increasing t goes to 0. Therefore, you have a term, the integral due to rainfall, plus a depletion term. I'm sure depletion is not the correct terminology for resolvement, but I don't. Uh, okay, I hope you understood. Depletion means resolvement in Italian means that you have an initial contribution that goes to zero. Final consideration, just uh, a qualitative consideration. This type of model is different by the time area method. And it's different because it's more appropriate for catchment with a relevant storage. Because by by changing the constant k, increasing it, if you increase a lot the constant k, this means that you decrease the water that flows out from the catchment and therefore you increase storage and there is no limit to the increase of storage because you know there is no upper limit to W so storage is explicitly considered you have storage even in the time area method I told you that you have storage even there but you are less flexible in considering the storage in the time area method in this case, you have a more explicit consideration of storage, and you can more easily allow for even huge storages. That's it. So now you have the, all the background for doing the exercise tomorrow with my PhD student, and then have a nice Easter break, and let's meet as soon as we can.